Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everybody out there. Good morning, everyone. Not because it's 10 a.m. in uh, Southern California, but because it's uh, because we're also early to the metaverse. Today we have our uh, usual suspects in the building. How you doing today, Jesse? I am well, man. I'm well. I'm uh, got through chatting with my mom for Mother's Day, and uh, yeah, it's a good Sunday. It's nice and sunny here in Amsterdam. I'm happy. Absolutely. What about you, Ray Veasy? Well, I, I'm I'm still bleeding out. The market's not good. I've just been over <laughs> here, uh, but Mother's Day is lifting me up. So, uh, so yeah, medic, so hang hang in there, everyone. Call, lean on family. <laughs> <laughs> right on right on and uh how you doing there today fancy uh doing good yeah and uh to all the europeans that are scared they forgot europe uh mother's day it was uh in march for us i believe so <laughs> doing good yeah <laughs> right on right on yeah you uh you got a good point there ray Veasy, about the markets but uh it's uh you know it's that just how the cycles run you know like you know, you have a couple of years of good, you have a couple of years of bad, and the, the good is better than the uh, the bad. Fortunately, for a lot of us, if you're in the right and in, in the right uh, in the right markets, um, were you ready to take us off with some news, Fancy? Yeah, I can do. So we have a couple uh, follow up stories today. Uh, one of them is that the U.S. Treasury has uh, sanctioned a currency mixer related to the Axie hack that happened a while ago. So, yeah, it's good to see more things happening in the background. Uh, we want to be safe with our investments. Absolutely. So, yeah. I don't know about that. Something about the U.S. Treasury doesn't make me feel any safer when they get involved. You know, yeah. it's, it's so interesting. You know, as I've been diving deeper into creating this course about the metaverse as whole and really like doing lots of research on blockchain and decentralization. And, you know, it's the death throes that we're going to see of, of the traditional governance models uh, that, you know, that blockchain is going to give us opportunities to, to explore a new way. Mm -hmm. And you, you see these big entities and, you know, corporations will be next <laughs> with DAOs where they're feeling that threat. And so they're going to do lots of things to try and maintain control any which way they can. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I think this we've is talked about that several times in the past. Yeah. Go ahead, Ray. No, this is just a sign to me that they're trying to, like they have been for a while, just catch up to everything that's been happening and getting their hands in the cookie jar to then also benefit. And then, you know, I guess have more control. Uh, ultimately, that's what it is because it's, it's just that that power struggle of people wanting to be more in control of their own lives versus being dictated and controlled by, I guess, the federal government um, and the departments that, that may be. So, I uh, it, it's bullish, but at the same time, something I rather not see happen <laughs> at all because you know we could get into Indeed. that whole situation. But yeah, it's, well, it, it's a either or. Big changes tend to have a, you know, there's a lot of upside as far as opportunity, but there's also a lot of danger. You know, a lot of times if there's a big change, a lot of people usually get hurt too, you know, so that's always a part of that, that little recipe. I was, uh, I caught some article. There was another one of those uh, South American countries that um, needed help from the IMF. And uh, a lot of those South American countries have been going and uh, accepting Bitcoin as their legal tender lately. So yeah. It was yeah, interesting that, to see the IMF get ahead of this particular country and say, hey, yeah, we're, we're going to come help you. We're going to come bail you out. <laughs> but we need you to uh, sign this here on this line here saying that you're not going to move into cryptocurrency like your your neighbors. You know what I mean? And right. I thought that was pretty interesting. So it's it's funny because it's almost like they're admitting that it's a problem. But at the same time, they're going around saying it's not a problem. And, you mm -hmm. know, you guys are it's just a scam. And you guys are the ones that's going to get hurt. But at the same time, they're like, oh, uh, well, we're not going to give any money out if you <laughs> if you got your your foot out the door kind of thing. Yeah, we see Argentina banning, you know, uh, just what the other day or yesterday, I think it was. The, there was two I think banks Argentina that is the one I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. So there was two banks that were ready and publicly um, making it available to custody uh, Bitcoin. Uh, from from its citizens, I guess to have it mm -hmm. just use it whatever ways they usually do with fiat. But then the government all came around out of nowhere and just said, you know, this is now um, illegal Bitcoin in the whole country, and you can't do anything. So mm -hmm. 
that's it for the, for Argentina. I guess now the whole, hopefully it's in South America, you know, we have uh, El Salvador who made it legal tender. So you're having these this divide almost of like who's really pulling the strings uh, when it comes yeah. to these countries and um, and those inner workings of relationships or the revolving door between you know big corporations and then you know government and special interests lobbying mm-hmm. groups and the whole nine. Yeah, it's, I think uh, it's, that it's, a lot ahead, of them will begin to change their tune when they see the benefits that are offered to other. I mean, that's the case with any technology. Like a lot of people think, like, oh my god, the idea of Neuralink. I'm not going to connect my brain to you know to the internet. But it's like people say that, but then again, we have the latest generation that's only known devices their whole life, and so for them, that's a logical next step. And the moment they do that and they see benefits from it. Other people are going to want to follow along because of the opportunity is not afforded to them. And I think we're going to see the same thing in other countries where those that choose not to will then look to the uh, other countries near them beginning to prosper and have new opportunities because of it and all of a sudden begin to change their tune. Yeah, you made a good sure. point there. Oh, go ahead. You got something fancy? Uh, one of the most interesting things about this story to me is uh, it says uh, they use the funds to generate revenue for its unlawful weapons of mass disruptions and ballistic missiles program. And uh, the thought of these cuddly little axes being traded in for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny to me. Uh, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, back to your point, Jesse, it's uh, it's one of those things as far as, uh, you know, because the older people who are usually in charge making the rules are going to be uncomfortable with change, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the younger people adopting it that always forces the hand of the, the older part of society to, to accept new things. I'll never forget when credit cards came out. My grandmother, my grandparents both were uh, completely against. They, they had their credit card, but they would not use them online. They would use them over the phone. It was a big mm-hmm. deal. No, we do our things with checks. I don't, you know, we don't trust a credit card. I remember that very specifically. And so I, you know, kind of set me up to be a. Uh, more accepting when I saw Bitcoin, obviously, but you know, that's, that's the way things normally roll. And then all around the world too, you have uh, a lot of countries are, are trying to get off of the, the dollar. Now, a lot of countries are looking for a, a way off of the dollar. They're talking about making their own currencies again. And, you know, you're always going to have Bitcoin there in the background. Like you said, you know, several countries are accepting it already. So I guess we'll see how that all moves. Well, then, as we've talked about before, one of the things that I think was driving Cordana is the fact that they chose to target developing countries that, for the most part, couldn't even afford bank accounts. Just to have a bank account was too expensive, but yet you got a smartphone, you have a digital wallet, you have cryptocurrency that allows you to now have exchanges of value that cut out an intermediary as a bank. So there's a lot of driving forces around the world that are Absolutely. making it so that it's the next evolution of what value exchange should look like. Fun fact, since you brought up Cardano, um, Cardano has a token on the Cardano network, kind of like how you can have all these different tokens on Ethereum. You can do the same. Cardano is another layer one for people out Mm -hmm. there who don't know. And uh, anyway, they have this thing called World Mobile Token, and it's basically a crypto that's based on them dropping um, towers throughout Africa to like get like satellite uh, uh, service. Basically, they're they're providing cell phone coverage across Africa to kind of leapfrog. And they're doing it through crypto and they're doing it in order to spread Cardano across Africa. So, um, yeah, those, those are things that are moving around um, in the States here. We couldn't even buy into it, obviously, because they don't want us touching stuff like that. But people overseas can probably uh, get some of that action. What you got next, Fancy? So, yeah, there was this interesting uh, partnership, I guess you'd call it, Budweiser and Zedrum. Yeah, I caught this yesterday on Twitter. Um, I'm a, I, I have a Z horses, and um, they were tweeting out that the the Clydesdales are coming. Budweiser's tweeting it out as well. Um, it just kind of reminds me if you look in the background there, you see the Budweiser signs up in the. It's kind of like a metaverse kind of look, and it just reminds me of uh, Ready Player One, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're going to start seeing this in these games. You're going to start seeing these these major brands wanting to advertise where people are spending most of their time. Um, so this is going to be an interesting effect. And it's also going to uh, uh, allow for some more liquidity be- to come into these ecosystems as well. So yeah. if the right project gets it right, this will be something that will 
pro possibly flow to the early adopters or the NFT holders or whatever of these different projects. So it's an interesting thing. You know, I was thinking a lot about like what what are brands going to be doing to enter the metaverse and what is the right way to do it? Because we've already seen examples of the wrong way. We've already seen pushback from communities uh, with the brands that they follow saying, hey, you know, don't bring that to us here like that. And I think that one of the ideas that most brands should probably consider is to look at the the NFTs that have done well, even the ones that are PFPs. It kind of represents a culture in a club. So rather than trying to sell them to their community, you know, they should probably start to look to use it as kind of an ambassador program and reward the people uh, that are out doing stuff to 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 market for them, to use word of mouth to kind of uh, share things that they like about the brand and start recognizing people within their community that are natural influencers, organic influencers, rather than just folks that are getting paid. I think that that's going to be a natural way for brands to actually enter the metaverse where uh, it's you're going to, I mean, it's, it's a lot of mileage when you can get someone to wear your brand on their being and people see that or have it as a part of their, you know, whatever their land or, or something, something that they're proud of. Like there's some brands that we know, like if, if, if you're willing to wear the, the rock, the tattoo, you know, the brand has done well with its community, whether it's Apple or Harley Davidson. And so I think it's going to be a different approach. I went through this with a lot of clients over the years, getting them to adopt social media long before they even saw the benefit in it. And it's going to be a similar but different approach for the metaverse. Yeah, those are very strong signals that make everyone uh, more interested and bring more eyes onto the onto the space in general. So. Yeah, I guess uh, moving on to the next story. Uh, this one goes back to August the start, where Juno, a blockchain on Cosmos, had their airdrop, and uh, one specific user managed to like game the system and get a bunch of tokens that he shouldn't have had access to. It was a uh, quite interesting because they decided in the end with proposal sixteen to. Uh, like hard fought the system back to a time when this was uh, all fine and he hadn't abused it yet uh yeah how do you do that without you know um, because there was obviously a lot of other activities that happened on the chain concurrent to that time so if you roll it back you're not just rolling back that one event yeah that's why it was such a big decision uh 40 yeah. percent yes 33 percent no and uh, so there's uh, another part of this story that came about recently. And uh, when they were hard, f after they've done this hard fork, now it has, uh, they've made an error. They uh, sent 36 million to the wrong address. And nobody has access to the funds anymore because it's just a, like a random address. So yeah, wow. it's, these guys can't catch a break. Wow. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Did they call tech support? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate, really. Code yeah. is law. Yep. That's brutal. So that might mean like another rollback. So, yeah, good luck to them, really. Elephant in the room on any time somebody does a rollback on any project is that that lets you know that the project is not decentralized. So, um, mm -hmm. like, it's not possible to roll back the right. Bitcoin network. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's always a... I mean, obviously, a project has to start off centralized in most cases and, and then later become decentralized. Uh, most, you know, in most cases, you can't start off like Bitcoin did, but it's just, a, just something always to think about, especially when we're dealing with these governments coming into this into the space as well. Yeah, and like originally when this airdrop happened, he got 120 million worth. So when that uh, all went down, it like the price tanked with it. And since they cannot access any of these uh, coins anymore, instead of like the guy who pretty much gamed the system keeping them, they just like toss them into the void unless they go back again. Yeah, very interesting story. Yeah. Rough times, especially during the times like this, as, as the overall market is just <laughs> trending downwards. Um, it's not cool, but more luck to them. 
So, uh, yeah, that was my last news story for today. Oh, was it? Okay, right on. Um, I see Lycan in the background here. So, uh, a warm welcome. Not sure. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I don't know if his head is sound up. He can hear you. you good. Somewhere. Okay, there we go. <laughs> like a warlord. There we Look go. Who it is? Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> if I do, hello. <laughs> Hands on the holsters. <laughs> At long last, man. Hands are up. Welcome, welcome. Hands are up. Hands are up. <laughs> it's a it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you, man. Great to see you. You've been uh you've been doing real well in the space here lately. Um, uh, that depends on who you ask. <laughs> true. Very true. Well, I think uh, you, you're, you're, you're amongst fans over here, so I think you're, well, you're going to be okay with that. I'll At never the forget. Day, uh, I, I just want everybody to have a good time. So, yeah, yeah, I know I, your, your 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 videos on your channel have personally uh, helped me with my town star earnings. So I appreciate you for that. I had a couple of assets sitting, and I went to go try to play town star to make a little something off them, and I couldn't get past the whole gas thing. And so I had to go watch your videos and learn how to set up a town. So you're doing so, major work in the space, brother. Quick, quick story on that. First of all, I'm glad that I was able to help you. And and every time someone thanks me, I'm like, you know, it's almost weird, like a weird emotion. I don't know how to handle it because I'm used to people complaining about me, not thanking me. So it's like <laughs> trying to learn how that works. Right. But uh, there was a, it was uh, the Bad Crypto Guys podcast. They had me on and um, Carrie had asked me to go talk to him about Townstar. And we're going over stuff. And one guy had like four uh, sugarcane stands. And the other guy had like uh, like 400 something worth of towns, worth of boxes. And I'm, they were just sitting there. They weren't using them. And I'm like, guys, this was like when town was like a buck or something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Guys, li listen to me. After this call, like I'm, I'm not joking. After this call, please talk to me. Because y'all are <laughs> missing out on a lot of money a day. Mm, yeah. People don't realize, I mean, just a couple of, you know, a little bit of dollars, you know, not a couple of dollars, but just a little bit of money per day adds up over the course of a month to to something pretty fat if you're if you're consistent. A lot of people don't realize that. And it, like when I got in, it, town was 80 cents. So you were you were I valuable. Mean, we'd like to think it's going to go back up. Right. So. So, I mean, honestly, even if it doesn't, as far as I'm concerned, it's free money. Mm -hmm. Um my computer is going to be on already, so it's not like I'm paying extra electricity for it. That may not be the case for everyone, obviously, but, uh, you know, hey, uh, let's look at the graph. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, but the, before the we do that, of it. Do you, uh -huh. like, hey, who, who is this guy? Like, who are you? you know, Where did you come from? Please give an introduction for those who might be watching that may not know of you because you're, a, I'd say, an asset to the community as a whole. So, um, yeah, just for those who might not be uh, understanding what's going on right now. <laughs> He's preparing. And action. Good, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you may be. It's like a warlord. The stash. The stash. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim, a.k.a. Like and Warlord, a.k.a. The Stash. I am just a guy from Louisiana who found uh, about Townstar over a year ago, started playing it. Was confused beyond all recognition, and I said, "There's got to be something on YouTube, right? I can, I can YouTube how to steal a catalytic converter. I'm sure I can YouTube how to play Townstar." So, sure enough, there was barely anything, and the only one that I found of use was a guy that was in French. And while I knew enough to kind of understand what he was saying, at the end of the day, I could see what he was doing, and so I was able to sort of emulate it. And from that point, I said, "Well, you know what?" I can't be the only one that's looking for information on Townstar, and I certainly can't be the only one that doesn't know French. So I just started making videos about my experiences playing, like this was my build, this is how I did it, and uh, it's sort of snowballed from there. Um, people uh, like you, uh, Bonafide, where you, you didn't know how to play, or you, there, was, there was some video of mine that helped you figure out some key component to Townstar, and then allowed you to move forward and, and start mm -hmm. doing play to earn or um yeah yeah you know it's it, it's that's i just i literally am just a guy uh and i just happen to be right place right time or you know fate destiny i, I have a, a, a proclivity for explaining things and uh i'm super passionate about town star and and gala and um you know i have a mustache so I felt like <laughs> we're all back together and and you know here we are this is it yeah, that's a great right background, uh, green screen. 
yeah, yeah. you know, listen, Walmart, man. It's just hard to beat. <laughs> it's hard to beat. All right. Thanks for that. So, uh, yep. so uh, what's your uh, what's your gaming history? I mean, I know you play Town Star and Spider Tanks and the Gala games, but like, you know, what was your first your first game and and the games that really impacted you coming up? So I remember playing a Road Rash on PC, our old gateway. I remember playing, uh, they had like a four, four-wheel four drive, like truck off-road game. I remember playing Need for Speed. Um, but my first, like, the first experience with a video game that made me want to call myself a gamer was Diablo 2. Okay. I remember we go. going over to my friend's house and playing that after school. And uh, I couldn't play it here at, at home because it was the devil. So I had to go to my friend's house. I didn't care so much. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that I, World of Warcraft. I got into that real heavy right when I was in college. And um, honestly, other than Townstar, I've probably spent the most time playing Diablo three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play. I, I mean, I think I'm, I can speak for everyone here. We've got a Steam library full of games that we've never installed, let alone played. So I, you know, I have those. Yeah. Uh, I usually will. I will pay attention. Uh, Opera GX is pretty good about. Uh, they have a little feature that tells you what games are free every day. So uh, I usually pick up some of those free games. I played a couple of those on stream recently, um, and everybody comes on and goes, "Is this is this play to earn? Is this got a game?" So like, not nah, dog. Yeah, you got a brand now, so it's, I yeah, know it's like, looking I, for it's you. Like, I get it, you know. But I'm like, this looks way too nice for a for a crypto game. Come on, guys. <laughs> Do you have a genre that uh, that you lean towards? Be it you know first person shooter, strategy game, forex. Uh, Dude, I used to be I used to be pretty damn good at, at Modern Warfare one and two, yeah. um, before they started turning it into a sci fi fan flick. But I mean, I liked like uh, Titanfall, but I wanted Titanfall to stay Titanfall and, and Call of Duty to stay Call of Duty, but it didn't happen. I've always gravitated probably towards FPS and, and then uh, RPGs, you know, um, mm-hmm. to a certain extent, like. Right now, I'm playing Elden Ring and absolutely loving it. And uh, I feel like that I tried some of the Souls games earlier. And not that I didn't enjoy them, but I didn't have the the time and or mindset to sit there and, and you know, better myself as a gamer by suffering through those games. Um, but then, then I came on stream and had people ask me to do a wine build with no NFTs in the desert. And I really realized what true suffering is and that Dark Souls <laughs> has no... <laughs> No comparison. Like <laughs> that was miserable. Miserable. Uh, well, I can only imagine. I haven't, I guess, dabbled in Town Star as much as I guess uh, Bonafide or yourself have. Uh, even I just, I think Jess uh, also jumped in. And but yeah, yeah I'm getting I, my town coin daily. Yeah, the main thing for me was that suffering of just time sync and and the initial setup and learning what to do to then just get more efficient over time, which I didn't yeah. apply myself to yet. So, but um. That's yeah. why that's why I like Lycan's channel because for me, I can go sit there and you know go through a couple hours of his content right quick and pick it up instead of spending all day trying to figure out how to build a town and you know recreate the wheel that you know some of the other people in the space have already you know started doing. It, it's one of those weird things, right? Like for me, I want everybody to learn how to play the game, so I get a lot of questions. Uh, in particular, I have a deliberate gap in my content, right? I have like that intro, which is really difficult. And then I have my end build, which is kind of like where you're working towards, right? What you want your town to look at at the end. I want you to learn the mechanics and fill in that middle void yourself. Now, I've been live streaming some of it, but I haven't mm-hmm. been chopping that content into its own videos. Because if you have the time to go seek it out, by all means, do it. But I, I still, like, I don't, I don't want it to be a cookie cutter experience. I want everybody to, to because I, I love the game. I care about it. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy playing it. Um so I'm trying not to just give everybody the answers, but I'm like, hey, this is the hardest part, right? Getting the gas. This is how you can do it. This is at least the strategy you should have to get to that. From there, work up towards this. And then I show you, you know, the end build in particular. So um, a lot of live streaming more now and just leaving that content up because, you know, I, I'm not here to fucking rob anybody, you know? Right. right. I've, I've been I've had people ask me if they could pay me for tutoring. I said. Well, just ask me a question. I'll answer it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I've already given all the information away free. Why would I charge you now? Like, just ask me a question. I mean, my, my yeah, DM sounds like new content, play. right? You can make another episode on it. Right. Yeah. Questions are in the DM. That's what I get. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so a question I would have would be like, so a person that's never played, let's say they just discovered Townstar. Do they actually have an opportunity to, to 
earn anything significant more than just a couple bucks a day if they don't have nfts uh, is there a strategy for that or and, and i guess the, the add on to that question does the leaderboard for people that are actually making big things happen does that stay the same or is there actually room for newcomers do people come in and shake that up so the biggest issue Townstar has had over the past many months, and, and this is uh, post Galliverse. So we're, uh, you know, like before Christ, after Christ, we're, we're, we're post Galliverse. <laughs> um, when, when the town coin price was, was uh, crucified. <laughs> uh, For T, yeah, symbolism here. We bring, right. we're, yeah. we're, we're bringing it all together now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it to him, you know what I'm saying? But, uh people in their town trying to turn their water to wine you know <laughs> you know technically you do right uh the game itself is meant to be a competitive game that's why there's a leaderboard in the monthly servers which don't actually have a competition and then you have your weekly which does have the competition now we haven't had a consistent weekly competition since january at the beginning of january and if you were to pull that graph up again you can see what happened uh, because of that and and in all fairness it happened to both town and gala because town yeah. star is gala's flagship game mirandas is not out yet mirandas is not even close to being out yet and the only games that are playable aren't actually from gala they're actually other developers mm -hmm. right other than town star i mean town star is their first piece the only game yep. yeah so you can look at december we had galaverse right and then there was a huge sell-off because well you know people were taking their, their cut so and, yep. go ahead. Well, let's let's talk tokenomics on on Townstar because this is something we've talked about, but I think you have more knowledge about it because you're deeper in the ecosystem than than any of us. So I've been watching these adjustments they've been making as far as gala power, town power, gyms, etc. And to me, this all looks good because nobody knows how to create a, a proper play to earn economy yet, and so it's all it's all a sandbox at this point. But I see, I see Gala. It seems like they're they're being kind of proactive and, and trying to come up with a model that's going to work in the future. What do you think about the the tokenomics of of Townstar and what they're what they're doing at Gala as far as how they're changing the power in the gym? So you had a couple of questions that came up in the chat that were kind yeah. of talking about um, that too. So also, l l I'm going to finish this question real quick. Yeah. Essentially, right now, you with the week the competition, which we're mm -hmm. bringing back right now for May Mayhem, someone can pick up the game, watch some videos, maybe learn how to play it and have a chance to win gala which therefore gets them in the ecosystem but yes the majority of people that are making the big bucks are those that invested money into the nfts and are playing the game not competitively but enough to meet the requirements um and then their nfts are earning them uh the town coin respectively off of that so to, to your point about what they're doing i am i am much better at spending money than i am making money so I'm one of the last people you need to ask about finance. But what I can tell you is I had Lindoko on the other day who does have financial background, does have a financial background. And right now we've just been making town coin and just mm -hmm. putting it out into the ether and people have been collecting it. Right. Right. And up until recently, your, your gala power level was dependent on two things, how much gala coin you have in your inventory and how much town coin you had in your inventory. So to get a higher Gala power level, it was two times as efficient to have town over Gala based on their formula they were using. So people were just holding town because it made their Gala power level higher. Mm. Well, then they announced they're removing that feature without giving town any function. So we're like, well, well then you, the coin's going to have no value because that's what's the point of having it other than just saying I clicked collect, right? All right. So if you look at the graph, they have not had a consistently consistent functioning weekly competition since the highest spike you saw back in Jan, July, uh, December into January. Like since then, it's just we've had nothing to go off of except more NFTs. And that was the biggest issue. Uh, as far as a burn mechanism, obviously, the ability to remove coins from circulation means there's less of them. Less of something means they're more rare, more rare usually means more valuable. Um, but it can't just be one of the things they've talked about. It's got to be all of it. They have mm -hmm. to give out less. They've got to provide a mechanism for it to be useful in game, not just keeping it in my wallet to make my gala power level higher. Cause obviously now that doesn't matter and give us an ability to burn some of the coin. That way it reduces the, the total supply. And thus again, 
you know, making it more more valuable. So as far as the way they're going about it right now, I mean, if you go on the Gala Discord, it's not it's not pretty. You're right. Uh, people are uh, went from, you know, for instance, for me, you know, open disclosure, right? I'm not uh, I'm not Mr. Heidi Hyde anything. I'll go ahead and give you guys a different uh, a different view of my beautiful face. So mm -hmm. if I were to click on my right here, you can see it says I've earned 163.42 uh, town points. So this is a new change they implemented. Um, and the best way to think of it is the circle around that town points, right? That's mm -hmm. the, that's the total pie of town coin that they are going to mint today. Okay. That, that pie, your town points is your town pie slice. So the more NFTs you have, the higher your town points are. Mm. So your slice of the pie is dictated off of how many points you have. So obviously I've got, I mean, I probably got above average, you know, I'm way below a whale, but um, I've got this uh, Vox that I'm still borrowing uh, that is 82 points. So that, mm -hmm. that brings me up to that 163. So let's say they mint 1.7 million town coin today. I'm going to get 163.42 town points percentage of that pie of that amount that makes sense so yeah. it's not like an even scale is the problem it used to be an even scale it used to be your town points equaled your town coin you got now your town point town points gives you a slice of the pie yeah. so obviously if you've got more town points you're gonna get a larger slice of the pie but the pie itself is actually dynamically shifting based off of how many people claimed the day before so that's the other difference it has has that generally been uh, lower? The uh, lower? I mean, when when it so ends far, up. So far, yeah. Let me look at mine real quick. Uh, so I was collecting one sixty three forty one. Mm -hmm. The first day it went active, I went to ninety five ninety two. Mm -hmm. The next day was ninety five point nine. The day after that was ninety five point eight seven. So it's been slowly shrinking. So there is a um the the article they had posted about it. They showed a graph and it's a very steep drop graph and then it kind of tapers out after 2023. But essentially, they're going to be going from minting somewhere over 1.7, 1.8 million town a day to less than 700,000 within the end of the year. So we are going to see this huge drop off. The thing is, nobody expected it to be almost half of what they were getting. Right. Um, and that boils back to the biggest issue that we've all had with Gala is communication. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's easy to say that while we're all talking on a, a podcast together or, or live stream. Like, obviously, we're trying to promote communication and um, it's not always radio silence with 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 them, but it is certainly more difficult to get their attention in the discord, which is the main mechanism of communication with them. So, right. right. It's one of those weird like, yeah, they're there, but most of the time you're not going to maybe they, they might see your comment, but they probably not going to respond. So you just you're stuck feeling like you don't have a voice. And that's where I fall in. I'm the voice of the majority of the community. And so it seems anyway, that's what they tell me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the uh, and it's and I don't know if this is in stone yet, but it sounds like after May Mayhem, they're going to release the dragons and the dragons function. Oh, no, the dragons are in now. I, I'm using now. mine now. Yeah, I'm using yeah. mine now. Yep. Okay, and so they don't provide any town coin, but what they do is they free up gas, which is like probably the biggest changer in the entire game to be able to it's eliminate huge. the need for for those for the truck. It's What's huge. the impact on that? So let's let's use Blue Steel as an example because that's the build that's currently the best to make right now. Um, Blue Steel sells extremely slowly. Uh, it sells the slowest of all the builds. So you could get away with one oil pump making gasoline for you versus four or five for a different build, something that you're, you're selling more often. So essentially you could eliminate not only the fuel tank, but the refineries, maybe an extra power plant or two. Yeah. I mean, that that's all space. And we, we're, we're all equal on the playing field of we have 16 by 16 square to make our town. So any spot you can free up is an advantage if you choose to use it you may not use it properly and then it doesn't do you any good um one thing i can always tell you is the neater your town looks the less efficient it is most of the time <laughs> right. there's there's some things where you want it to be a nice straight line of roads because there's one thing in the game is you can't control how fast the 
building workers are. So, for instance, the fabric plant worker, she walks as fast as she wants to walk. And that's it. You can't really like upgrade her speed, which is something I've taught them about town be, would be a great use for is being able to upgrade speed of workers in the game. Right. Burn it that way. What do I know? Um, so. You do that with a dragon, you just got that's just it, you don't need five or six different buildings that you needed before. I mean, that's five or six buildings. You can add another mine. You could add another power plant. You could add another storage building. You could have another steel mill, like just with blue steel alone. So the dragon so is that, certainly great. Does that yeah. make another build more desirable or is blue steel still it? Right now, yeah. I don't I don't think it would have an, an effect. Like, I don't think the dragon would help a wine build or a cake build enough to bypass a blue steel. I still think the way they did the uh, main adjustment to the, the new um, meta where Iron only requires one lumber, one water drum, one energy. That's such a huge buff that it basically has made iron. You know, you could almost do just iron as your rush instead. I'm of doing just iron right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I mean, like on my build, I'm actually I'm actually just selling wool and iron, and I have yeah. been for uh, the entirety of the competition. Um, if you were to look at, uh, I've got 128 million dollars. So that means in five days, basically, I've made that much just selling iron and wool, you know, so that's a, plenty of enough to redo my build and finish off blue steel. I just haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. I've actually been like a real person and living my life. <laughs> but for a build like for yours right now, I guess, based on what I guard was sharing there in the comments that the dragon wouldn't even make sense for you because it, you can't automate it. Yeah. So that's the other thing is, uh, my guy that's doing uh, our script, Crypto Dude, by the way, shout out Crypto Dude. We got to get the uh, auto sell dragon uh, in. But so so let's say it's not in effect for May Mayhem. Fine. Once it's active, yes. It's, I mean, it's going to provide a significant advantage for those that have it, which would also lend me to believe that most people that have them probably have other NFTs and they already already have an advantage on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, not having to. So for instance, what we're talking about, right? Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Oh, Windows has this uh, shake feature. If you shake the window, it disappears. Windows. All right. So, like, I wouldn't need this building. 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 You know, that's four buildings right there. I would need one of these. I wouldn't need one of these. Like, it, it allows you, it opens up some doors for you for sure. But that's kind of where all the NFTs fall in, in, in anyway, is that they're giving you an advantage in the game. Whether, like, for instance, these, this water tower is providing more passive water than a pond can. This Snoop NFT provides water like a pond, but I don't have to pay anything to place it. So I can put the pond anywhere I want. It doesn't cost me what the pond costs to make. Oh, wow. So, you know, there's advantages. Um, the wheat stand, that's the one I've used the most probably in all of my videos. The wheat stand pr passively produces wheat, which auto fills your feed mills, which makes producing feed for your animals much faster and easier. Uh, and that's usually how I, I sell wool to make cash. Um, but again, if you look at my rate, I'm making almost, I'm making four iron a minute, four and a half. So every two and a half minutes, I'm selling iron. I mean, that's just pretty good. Especially if you're trying to build up your town, trying to get gas production. Mm -hmm. Um, question yeah, from the, there's a lot, man. We do, we can go on, we can go on all day. So yeah. question from the chat, uh, like, yeah. so, uh, Rob mega here is asking, what would you say the top three builds are uh, blue steel being number one? And just to piggyback on that question, how often do these builds rotate as far as, you know, I know the number one build has changed several times since I've been involved with Gala. So, so, uh, blue steel followed by probably cakes and cakes and wine. So they, they, they purposely nerfed wine by adjusting the amount of points that it's worth. So they didn't really change much of the actual mechanism that requires you to make, like make wine, but they made the points less, which therefore makes it less desirable. Um, I would say this stick with blue steel. All you need is a mountain. You, it doesn't matter if you're on the desert. doesn't matter if you're on plains. doesn't matter if you're on forest. It just need a mountain and you could produce anywhere from eight to 12 blue steel. And that should get you top 1000 most, most likely. Um, it's one of those things. Uh, cakes is extremely hard to balance as is wine. And that's really your only other options. I've seen some people trying to do uniforms, but uh, they nerfed uniforms extremely heavily. So really and truly just everybody's doing blue steel is what it seems like. Um, 
Uh, I do have a question. From your experience, are they nerfing these particular, um, I guess, methods with these ingredients, whether it's wine or the uniforms, for a particular reason? Like, were they, yeah, like, because I'm not in the ecosystem as in depth as um, as yourself or Bonafide, so, maybe. To re to to refinish with what, what Bonafide was saying, as far as how often, uh, we used to have two weeks of vanilla. So what were like the base level of what the game is? So with no real no true nerf, uh, nerfs or buffs, just kind mm -hmm. of like how the game is. And then we'd have two weeks of a new meta. So for instance, gotcha. one week was it was energy. So uh, as many batteries as you could produce, right? So essentially people were just doing windmills, right? Wind turbines. Um, you know, so that was a whole week of that. And those are the weeks uh, where someone can just come in and get it, get a good shot. If it's a new meta and we haven't had months and months of practice on the particular meta, then it's kind of a level playing field. Yeah, right. people with NFTs are going to have an advantage, but they're not going to really necessarily know what the build's going to look like. So they're going to be just like you, trying to actually figure out what the hell they're doing. Right. Cool. Um, but yeah, as far as why they do what they do, uh, it's because they don't listen to me. If they would listen to me, <laughs> it, everything would be so much better. Uh, no, I think here's what I think happened. They came out with the Snoop uh, Pimp and Ride NFT, which produces passive iron, and we'd mm. never had a passive iron NFT before, and that broke the old meta um so i guess to nullify the snoop nft they just made iron easier to make okay. so i think that's where they were going with that and in doing so making iron easier they made blue steel uh, once again the meta so if you look at it blue steel cake those are like the top tier four products or whatever they call them uniforms was a very viable build until the snoop nfts you could win with you could place really high with with uniforms Uniforms are, are are used to make blue steel. Like they shouldn't ah. be better than blue steel, if you think about it that way. Right, right. But you were able to make uniforms faster, and more of them than you could blue steel. Blue steel was like a six blue steel an hour kind of build, and there were people doing 160, 170 uniforms an hour, which ended up being like ninety something thousand points an hour or somewhere in there. Like there was a lot. So um, I think that's where the shift came from. They're trying. They were they were trying to undo the damage that the snoop in iron nft did um it's still extremely valuable and extremely potent um you could just make oak barrels now as a rush actually hmm. instead of doing anything else because you have the iron already because the thing with iron is you got to have the mine you got to have like we'll, we'll go over it. for those of you that never made iron before so to make iron you have to have a mine okay well obviously it's a mine now, that mine needs lumber, energy, and water drums. Now, this mine is not going to get water drums from this water pump like your power plants do or your lumber mill does or your refinery does. You're actually going to have to have a water facility, create a, a, a water drum, and put it in the warehouse. So you can see here they're going grab water drums. You're also going to have to have a lumber mill making lumber. So that's all costs that you would have to eat to get iron production yep. going right versus the snoop nft you just place it down right here next to the lumber mill and if i were to stop him for a second to make oak barrels which by the way sell for fifty five thousand dollars, all i need is oak iron and one energy so all i would need is one wind turbine making him energy one water facility making him a water drum and then the snoop nft and i'd be making oak barrels all right. So it wouldn't take you that long to get to oak barrels, and therefore you'd be selling fifty-five thousand dollars worth of oak drum uh, oak barrels extremely quickly. So nice. that's really where the Snoop NFT kind of broke the game. Was was that it, this this took a lot more to get going before, and now it's a lot easier to compensate for how easy it is to get the Snoop uh, or the Snoop NFT makes it an easier process to get iron gold. Right. So. That's oh, my story. I'm sticking nice. to it. Do you think they learned from that? Do, do, do they have they commented at all as far as like learning a lesson from introducing an NFT and it breaking the game and having to basically nerf stuff? Are you asking me if Gala admits mistakes, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Get them. <laughs> we couldn't just ask you that up front. Hey, we have to. Hey, we'll, you know. we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I like it's quite it. interesting well, to think about how Gala reacts with like nerfs and buffs because like in future with Mirandus, like what if uh, one exemplar is like really overpowered and or they shift the mess somehow. Yeah. Are you how, trying to tell me that you... Mirandus isn't gonna be perfect when it comes out? <laughs> that part, right? <laughs> God, yeah, man. 
FUD. <laughs> that part FUD, right here. Buddy. I'm FUD. out of here. <laughs> FUD ban. <laughs> right, but but it but, it, but on a on a little more serious tone, it, it is a concern that I guess even outside of Gala Games and any other ecosystem and projects that are being built, it, it's a it's a constant ebb and flow of just nerfing and buffing and you know, and testing and breaking and you know. But at, at what point so, is it? Yeah, go ahead. Let, let's read. Let's read the comment that was written out about what happened in the competition, which is still going on. Yeah, not, and it shouldn't be. In all fairness, in my opinion. They should have stopped it. Uh, we are sincerely sorry for any frustrations that you may have experienced this week. After much consideration, we have decided to continue on with the competition until it's scheduled in time. So they didn't admit they were wrong, but they did say sorry. So I guess that's supposed to count. Um, I, they went on to explain a, a, why, a why it was happening. Right. Go ahead. No, that's just that's a vibe I, I've seen quite a bit. They'll, they'll apologize, but they won't you know, say there was an error. Yeah, well, because they would have to admit that they rushed out the code again or they didn't test the code properly. That's what happened when they brought the competition back before. We still had bugs in the game. And actually, I've had someone send me, you can go find it in the Townstar bug reports. People were reporting rollback issues before they started May Mayhem. Mm -hmm. So if they truly check bug reports, then they would have known that their bug was happening. So either they don't check bug reports or they don't care. Or they don't care. It can yeah. only be one of the two. Which one is it? You know? Absolutely. And that's where it comes down to is whether whether they can legally say investment or not, we all uh, we all know it's not tongue in cheek, it's not under, it's not backdoor deals. We people are investing money, time, effort, energy into this game, this ecosystem, and they're not getting not only their return on investment for their time, but for their money, but it also feels like the, the they care less and less. And I had the last video I did where I said it doesn't feel like they care. One of the devs DM me and he's like, man, that hurt my feelings that you said I don't care. I said, I know you and I know you care, but I'm speaking for everyone. It's not just me when I speak. I may right. be speaking from my perspective, but I am channeling what I hear from the community. The community. Right. And you guys have got to get that through your head. Like mm -hmm. I'm on same Sigala, as us. but I I'm telling you what you guys need to do to, to appease the beast from my perspective. So either you don't believe me or you don't want to listen to me, which again, which one yeah. is, it? yeah. Why I would, would just... I, why would I lie to you? I, if right. I, if it, I was it, doing good. I'm going to do good. Why would I not, you know, exactly. that part, that so, part right there. The, uh, there's a lot of community members who've been, um, I guess along the way since day one, almost with a lot of these big, you know, web three gaming companies. Right. And you, even in Axie infinity and it's hard maybe or it might be more difficult for a project and its developers to discern or know whose intentions are more pure and not just based on how long they've been with a project because they might just be in it for financial purposes and just to, to extract value and maybe not contribute constructively in a way and then others might just be there solely because they are wanting to help the project develop alongside the, the people who are developing the project and 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 put information out there that's going to help and um, guide the project in a way. But if you're one of, of the few people who actually care and are known as uh, in the community, not selfish in the way of just trying to get more views on your YouTube channel or stir, you know, wrestle the bushes to to just make more money, or I don't know what these you know, developers might think because of just how the space is is growing and evolving with scholarships and things. Then it would behoove them to just, you know, not. Use you almost as that that funnel of information for 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 the for the masses who are feeling these things that you're just trying to communicate. And similar to Rome, as we do here, you know, we're not taking shots or throwing shade. It's things that we're witnessing through our own experience, right? And then that what we hear through other people's experiences. And it's all the same game. Everyone's trying to maybe do the same builds. We're all in the same ecosystem. We're all in the same Discord. It's not like there's a there's a pandemic of emotion. Right, it can happen. We see it all the time, but these are things that, it, like you said, if they're checking the the channels of people who are trying to help a project grow in the right way, then it's either one of those two. So they're not checking it, or I don't. They might not just they're care not, enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the thing is, okay, we say they don't care. Okay, we're defining care as making the the correct changes, right? So you may care enough to check the Discord, but if you're not 
really listening to the Discord or the Discord's being so heavily monitored that you don't really maybe see things that you should be seeing that would help the positive changes happen. It's just, it's a perfect storm, man. Um, I was on Faz Radio uh, last week and they had, the, well, I think we, I've talked about it before, having a council of elders or a voice of the people, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, and just have, you know, leaders from all the guilds, people that have been part of the community for a long time, have a round table, right? And we bring up issues and come to an agreement, make it an odd number so that we can always vote on something and have like pass, uh, you know, a, a, some sort of resolution or suggestion. But if you can't listen to us and the community has said these guys represent our voice, then that then how can you say you're listening to the community? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Bitbender took those questions from me. And I mean, that. but why did I why did I have to do that? Why, why did I have to just go be a troll in the discord to get Bitbender's attention? Because be like, hey, that, bro, you, that's you, been you my experience as well for for as long as I've been a part of the community is that the response that comes from Gala it, the, the primary purpose, in my opinion, is to put out fire. It's not necessarily to say, hey, we really want to work with the community and understand what you guys are saying, and then we're going to respond because that's what our objective is. Um, my experience, and as unfortunate as it is, is that they're building a business, they're going to make money, and the community is a necessary part of that, and they'll respond in a way that puts out fires as best they can, but it's not like that's their ultimate objective is to hear what the community is saying and to build based on that. Right. Okay. So let me ask you, Lycan, um, what yeah. is, what do you think as far as, <laughs> what do you, what do you think as far as the, the long-term uh, outlook for, for Townstar and what, what, what is going to throw in gala games in general? They have several games coming out. You know, we've spoke about Miranda, spider tanks, etc. but more particularly as far as Townstar in particular, you know, if you're coming into the game right now, looks like we possibly are starting a nice bear market. So we, might see more bleeding out of token prices, things of that nature. But NFTs will probably get cheaper as well alongside that, right? right. Um, would you want to get in, you know, you know, putting your money into the game right now? Or would you want to come in maybe just to play for free? Or would you just leave it alone at a time like this? What do you what are you thinking? Of? And let's go, you know, bear market. And then also we know that, you know, 2024 will probably have another bull run. So things will probably be looking nice again then. So long term outlook as well. But the next two year and then the long term. I really need to see what happens in May Mayhem because okay. that's what brought me in last year, right? And I stayed okay. around because I enjoyed it. I stayed around because I was having fun. I stayed around because I was learning things. I stayed around. I've never been here because of money. And, I, and I'm one of the few people that I think can genuinely say that. I'm okay. here because I enjoy playing the game. And it's given me the ability to help help people, whether it's videos or giving away uh, NFTs. Like I've, I've, I've given away so much because I want to help the community because I want to keep building the community. I don't know what's going to happen with Townstar if they can't learn from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was hoping would happen when they brought a three and a half day competition back for no reason, other than they said to test the server, uh, test the code in the dev server. That's what it's for. Right. So I think there was probably a rush I'm going to go ahead and assume from the head boss benefactor himself, we've got to make, we've got to make may mayhem. We got to make it work. And then it comes out and it was atrocious. It was horrible. Worse than before. And what do they do? They push through it. Why? Cause it's may mayhem. I don't think they can allow their pride to be hit enough to admit. And yeah. I, I worry that their pride, just like Rome will be the downfall, right? They, they need to be able to take criticism and use it constructively. If without that mechanism, I don't know how far Town Star is going to go. I think they might just keep throwing projects at the wall until see they and see what sticks. Well, um, that raises a, a question that ties into that: is that the secondary market? I mean, people are still pricing, you know, the the Town Star NFTs incredibly high. So much so that based on where the the, the price of Town is now, you would be have to be an active and engaged player as long as the model holds up and you wouldn't still see a return on your investment for two to three years. I think if you're getting in now, it's because you either believe in the future of Gala games or you genuinely like playing town star. Yeah. I don't think you can, anybody can with a straight face say that the ROI is worth it. <laughs> right. Well, I, and I don't, I, don't, I, don't, that. I don't, I don't do ROI, but mm, I mean, I'm not an right. idiot. I understand what it means. <laughs> right. 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 So if you're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars on an NFT, you don't want right. it to take a hundred thousand years to get that NFT return back. Right. right. 
on the on the positive side, uh, as far as crypto goes in general, you know, going into a bear market, you know, usually the, the there is no profit, right? And so those are the times when you see the projects that are really gonna like Axie was building the, the success of Axie was was built in in two thousand what eighteen Ray. 2019 you know what i mean like you yeah. know way old before the 2020 bull run yeah early um, and so i think we have a similar opportunity coming now in the space where you know we're going to have you know 2023 i expect that to be a, a nice deep bear market and then you'll have 2024 which will be another another bitcoin having so yeah you know i mean the projects that are able to survive during this period are going to be in a stronger position for the next bull cycle but they have to survive they have to make it through without <laughs> I think that's the key, right? Is it going right. to survive? I, I don't see why it wasn't. If you look at the Discord, there's enough people in here that just seem either yeah. oblivious to what's really going on mm -hmm. or they just don't care. Mm -hmm. um, I I care and I don't, I mean, I, I'm going to be here no matter what. Until the game ends, I will be here. I'd like to think that Townstar can be the flagship until Moranis comes out as far as for the P2E. But if Spider Tanks does it better, Spider Tanks might become the new PT, P2E flagship, flagship right? Um, it's certainly a much easier game to get into, certainly easier to understand, certainly easier to pick up and play. And depending on how they do their P2E mechanism, it, it, it could it could be that. Um, Have there been no any word, on, no word on that yet, right? Yeah. So the last I saw that they said is is they're giving out the TC test, the Silk Test Coin. Mm -hmm. They they will push out to True t Silk Test Coin or uh, True Silk Coin when it's ready and they want it to be ready as soon as possible, but they are not going to launch it until they are hundred percent sure that it's working and ready to go. But um, do we think it'll be like tournament payout? Is that kind of the model for, for right now? It's about playing and winning a day. And I think they start there. And then I think they could throw in win games with X tank or win games with X yeah. weapon or win X type times of uh, versions of this game, right? Win chicken rush or, you know, the, the, I think they can start there simply Make it diverse enough so that you have to play more than one game. You have to—I mean, you actually actually play the game. Right. Um, but it is fun. It is easy to pick up, especially if you can team up, and especially if they make the mechanism for team matching better, where you can get three of your buddies together, or you can get six of your buddies together, and y'all can, you know, like if you got you like the guild, right? Get six of you guys together, and y'all just three v three each other until you get your town coin or your, mm -hmm. uh, your silk coin, right? That would be a possible mechanism, and it, it's not an abuse. It's just resourceful using of your your your. Resources, I guess. I don't know. Right, right. Describe it. Um, yeah, I must say that, like overall in the space, to Gala's credit, and then even Axie Infinities, they're they're playable games that are involved in P 2 E, right? Yeah. If we're not calling it play to like play to earn anymore, as the whole space is transitioning, these big companies that were doing it just for like play to earn, you know, model, it, it's not the case anymore. And there's a there's a there's a big adaption like a adoption of a of a new type of. Uh, of a way to market all of these types of things that that's coming around the corner, like play, like play to own, you know, more so than anything else. Right. Yeah. So ownership doesn't mean return on investment where play to earn was, I'm going to earn what I put in back at some point. Right. So now it's just like no expectations to earn anything as far as your return back. And, but, but I, I, I digress. I just wanted to make the point where there's not many games to play at all that earns you anything, maybe just not what right. you, you, you earned back. So playable games within Web3 with NFTs, integration, and all these things, you know, I give Gala the credit. And for any other project, we see a lot of trailers coming out and even beta betas that are coming within this year. This year is going to be phenomenal. And there's going to be way more things to play. We have big time, you know, coming out. We have a, slots of games that are being able to be played right now. Um, you know, even Undead Blocks. Uh, yeah, so I, I see I see great potential, and there's like many others. It's just that w at what point are the economies going to be the main focus, um, and, and not just selling more things to get more eyes on your particular ecosystem? Because then you'll just not you're not going to last the test of time. You, you might have the most attention because of the marketing campaigns, um, but I, I I'm feeling personally that Townstar is the carrot in front of the horse. And then when Spider Tanks, for example, becomes that successful play to earn model, which was built off of the mistakes of Townstar in a certain way, then, you know, maybe Townstar just gets left the way it is. And then there's a more focus on another another game, right? Like, because how much time and energy is it going to need for Townstar to just be iterated all the time 
24-7 with all these other games coming out. I don't know how much involvement any of the Gala game developers are involved in any of these particular games they're bringing on, like, like Spider Tanks. Or is it just, hey, we, we made money for you selling NFTs. Now you do your thing and you're on your own timeline with some expectations of us as Gala It's games. supposed to be separate teams, but... I hear what you're saying. Yeah, well, and, and and that's the thing, right? By, by the way, shout out to Comedia. Those guys, I met them at Galliverse. They are on their shit, like, man. Nice. I, everybody on their team was like, like I, I remember meeting them, and like that was really my first time like watching Spider Tanks be played, and I'm like, dude, they got it. Like, why can't Townstar be like this? And I'm like, oh, because mm-hmm. Townstar is actually made by Galley Games. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it it it. I I I can see that Ray a hundred percent. I really can. Um, yeah. and that would hurt me because I care so much about the game, but I also, I'm also a realist. And I, and I, I think great examples. When I played superior, I was blown away mm-hmm. by superior. That was a pre alpha teaser test thing. And it was better than town stars ever been. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was ridiculous. So there's certainly more room to improve town star, of course, but they're, I mean, they're announcing 20 plus games. So, it really does feel like they're just gonna keep throwing shit at a wall. Whatever sticks, that's what they're gonna pony in front of the horse. Yeah, that be the carrot. Then, um, and hopefully they don't let the others die in the. <laughs> that's, with, that's my concern. You know, yeah. in that luxury, yeah. So that raises a, it. A, another question. Back at the beginning of the month, uh, benefactors said that there are currently twenty-eight games in development. Uh, of course, we only see what about ten of those on the site itself. Um, of the ten that we know of. Uh, that are on the horizon. You know, I guess there's three that are playable today. Are there really three? They say three. three. They yeah. Three. Um, um, Town Star, Spider Tanks. Spider Tanks. What else? You got, well, you, you've done playtests of what? Superior as well so, as. Well, uh, so Superior, Town Crush, uh, Leg- Le- Legends second. Reborn. Oh, Legends Reborn. Five. Yeah. Legends Reborn uh, and Superior, the other two. Yeah. we. I mean, we've only played five games so far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so walk, Walking Dead so far in the distance. Uh, Miranda's, we had that that pre alpha. Uh, we don't even want to count that. Yeah, Miranda's doesn't count. Last Expedition, uh, we have no new news on that mm-hmm. since Galliverse. Legacy, that's hopefully he doesn't take the money and run. Uh, Echoes of Empire, <laughs> I would imagine that might be next or Fortitude. Fort- I think we might get something on Fortitude pretty soon. Fortitude is looking like it's yeah. getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, is there one or two games that stand out that you're excited to, excited about? In that lineup, I mean, honestly, Superior has been my definitely FPS. I, yeah, their their dev team was super interactive during their play test. I live streamed it a bunch. I did videos on it. I got stuck in the map. I was stuck. I couldn't get out. I went into the Discord live on stream. I said, "Hey guys, I'm stuck." One of their devs came on my stream, saw where I was at, recorded it, and they're like, "Hey, I got you. You can you can restart the game now." Nice. So. Like that kind of interaction, that instills confidence in me and their yeah. willingness to make the game better. They want this project to succeed. Not to say that every developer doesn't want their project to succeed, but I don't see that kind of level with everything so far. Spider Tanks is on their shit. Superior is on their shit. Legends Reborn blew me away. I wasn't expecting to be that good. And I used to play Magic in high school. I loved it, right? Um, I did some videos on that. It's a very slow game. I'll say that. That's probably the only downside I see is a match could take up to an hour, depending wow. on how close oh, wow. you guys are. Hmm. So I don't know if anybody wants to sit there for an hour playing one match. So is it just the pace? Is there anything about the the style of gameplay that can be fixed, or is that just how it is? Uh, you know, maybe if they make they speed up some animations and and maybe cut down the, the player timer, it's possible. Yeah. Um, but no, it's definitely a slower paced game and, and i mean it, it it was fun but if i'm trying to grind cool. out my play to earn for the day it might take me six hours right i don't know if everybody's got six hours to play you know what i mean <laughs> no um so that's that was my only concern with that but as far as the way it looked it was really really cool um the visuals are great and uh it was fun it was fun so, so what's your what's your favorite you know you got you know the games we got the two that are out now spider tanks and, and town star what's your favorite out of those two and then what's your favorite like overall you know on the board i mean i love town star what are you looking forward to i love town star i mean i look forward to miranda's i just hope it actually is what we want it to be um spider tanks is fun and it is enjoyable but i don't see myself grinding it other than just to do my p2e like 
it would be what most people are playing town star for just to get their town coin like it would be me playing because yeah. it's not my thing so much something to say like mm-hmm. in all fairness superior is a roguelite so there's that randomness and repetitiveness of it but the story was intriguing like i, I wanted to know more about this world and the superheroes are bad very uh the boys-esque where you know superheroes are evil and you know they, they've been taken over kind of thing so you know i'm a sucker for a good story um the echoes of empire seems fun i just i i, I mean that's one of those do i how long is it going to take to to pde on that one right we don't have anything in our hands so we don't really know what their gameplay is going to look like um, other than with the little like your screenshots you see here, right? If it's a chess right. match that could take three hours, again, it boils down to practicality, right? We see that all the time with Townstar. I want to play to earn within a, a, a no more than an hour, right? If I reasonable set time, time frame, <laughs> yeah. We don't all don't have uh, seventeen hours a day like I do to play games, so <laughs> you know. I mean, especially I, if not if you're not earning, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and and while they are fun, there are other games that are fun, and I'm not being told I'm gonna make money off of and then right. I don't. but right. i you're right i do own the fuzzle and now it is my friend did you get a fuzzle <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna surprise me if you got a fuzzle i'm like don't don't play <laughs> it's in the like and i thought i knew get all right fuck here. <laughs> get the- yeah, oh, now no, so, that's that said that said uh huh. You know, I get I, I I've been battling in the Fuzzle Discord. I got blocked by like six people yesterday. I saw uh, you. I saw it going down yesterday. I, I saw. <laughs> I was laughing. I put some laugh emojis on your. I'm like, too. bro. It's like, I don't like when he talks. Block. I'm like, okay. That's. <laughs> you're not hurting yeah. my feelings, man. I'm like. Uh, yeah, you're amongst uh, you're amongst y'all friends go here, wrong. Because uh, Discord, by all means. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is, and this this is all ties back to the same issue. Post Galaverse, not only has Gala Games not been the same, the ecosystem has not been the same, and most importantly, the community has not been the same. It has been a downward trend, just like the graphs. And that's why I think the graphs continue to be a downward trend. The mm-hmm. argument that I got a lot yesterday was that, well, it's following the crypto economy. Can you pull up what the Bitcoin graph looks like and then compare it to the Townstar graph? Because I'm pretty sure they're not the same. Yeah. So you can't use the argument that it follows that graph when you look at that graph. Uh, look at that graph and then look at the Townstar graph. Look, look at three months. Compare the well, three months. Not, not only that, but uh, the utility is, is, is supposed to be very different between the cryptocurrency market and the play-to-earn games. That's the entire point, is that you're supposed to be able to decouple. If you have economic activity within a game, that should be able to decouple from what's going on with these other countries so always if you're not if you don't have your if you don't have it fixed you don't have it fixed is decoupled the gala (laughs) and town are doing their own thing which is yeah yeah and and a lot of these tokens see the overall market with the top 10 to 20 cryptocurrencies if they're not gaming web3 niche type of projects with their own utility tokens and utility tokens right what's the utility of any of these tokens that have a two model whether it's a governance and utility Right, we always see the the same type of downward trend. There's just too much downward pressure and not enough incentive to hold a token to do more things within the ecosystem of the game itself. So Bitcoin, mm-hmm. yeah, overall may, it might impact a, the the any chart to go downwards if there's macro, you know, downward pressure if or whatever the macro is, is out there in the world. But overall, it's the project's team and their and their ec- economists that are, hopefully are on are on the, the the topic here and developing the economy in a way that adds more utility, more burning mechanisms for the tokens and, and to, to help that that micro economy of that token in the game be sustainable, right? It doesn't need to be a stable coin, right? Where it's always pegged to a dollar and you could always know what you're going to cash out every day. We're not asking for that. That would be great, but <laughs> that's almost maybe not, impo- that, that's probably not possible. And what we're not going to see for a long time to come because of the transition of the whole space as a whole from what we were doing just a year ago, which was like, making bank from you know selling the tokens extracting all the value from this you know utility token or you know what what utility is there but to sell the token to make your money back from initial investment right. so it, right. it's not it, we're not blaming gala or any anyone in particular it's just well, like I'm blaming, I'm blaming gala for well what i mean by that is that 
you, th there's blame on the project right, developers no, no. It's for the, sure. It's the end consumer that's that's it's, it's the graph is directly reflective of the end right. consumer, but the right. end consumer is acting based off of what they're seeing from Gala. That's, that's what I'm right. saying. And, and and it's almost black and white at this point where all we're needing now, and with the help of the community, like you like you've been doing, is suggest ways to fix this. <laughs> and and if and so they don't have to be overly complicated, but it does take time on the part of the devs to 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 make these things happen. I'm not a dev. I don't know how long it would take to have these sinks, you know, uh, built in or to create some new type of. Not five months. Not five. <laughs> yeah, four and four to six weeks, maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, I give a, a month. A month. Yeah. I give them a month. Yeah. But that's my whole point where it's just like it's changing to, yeah. you know, play to own and then whatever the economy be becomes based off of whatever new, you know, uh, sinks or economic, you know, s strategies that are implemented, we'll see. Right. But it's almost that of what these projects are becoming. And uh, very few of them are really honing in on making the, the economic sound for a longer period of time. I, w I wanted to touch on like Pegaxi too. I forgot to mention it earlier on because the Viz token, we see this with smaller potion. We see this with the rent to breed model. Everyone is getting in first to make the most and then leave because who knows how long it's going to last. We know Gal is going to be around. They have the money to just keep doing the exact same thing today if they didn't even change anything with Townstar, right? It, it, but does that mean the community is going to stay the same way? Like, obviously not. There's some type of... Um, you know, there'd be a whole not a whole lot of the the, the veterans leaving and a whole lot of new blood coming in, and right. then it would just be they drain the new blood and then they leave because they're pissed off, and right. then the new ones come in. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's what and I. That's feel. the key is that they got to retain some of that old blood while bringing in new blood. That's the key to a functioning economy. You know, you got to all you got to have that growth. You know, so and that's what it boiled no down growth, to with town because right? there was no function for town. Right. So now Plain. they're giving us a function with gyms. Great. Um. They're going to give us a burn mechanism. Great. Mm -hmm. But the game's got to fucking work, and it's not. And that's all cool in, in the gang that you got this thing coming. But if I can't play the game, if I can't, if you can't bring back what made Town Star so popular and functional and why the NFT economy was being driven so high, it was because we had a weekly competition. There was a reason you could just pick up the game, play, yeah. and get into the ecosystem. And I've, 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 I mean, I literally had that conversation at Galaverse more times than anything else. Lowering the barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. Lowering the barrier. Get the, more people in the game. And that's what Mayhem is supposed to represent. May right. Mayhem is supposed to be like, hey, guys, check out what we've got. All you got to do is install the game and play it, and we're going to reward your time with some of our token. Come join the ecosystem. And they can't even do that because it's rolling back. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, man. It's one of those... Now we've had that same that same issue with uh, when we talked about like just a setup for like Mirandas and stuff like that as well. Yeah. You know, like the, the the clear picture of somebody being able to come in free to play and build themselves up in the in the system to a point where they're able to play and earn. Um, you know, we just weren't seeing those steps there yet yeah. for Mirandas or for you know, like you're saying, like for Townstar, I guess as well. Then, I mean, if if Townstar was where Mirandas was when I got in. I'd be blown away with the way it is now, mm -hmm. but it was working and now it's not working. Not, not working and, as well. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not like, Oh, this is a one or two week thing. It's been since the beginning of January. It hasn't been working. Yeah. So well, one of the things that, and I don't know enough to know this is the case, but one of the things that occurs to me is that you've got a very market driven side of the company. This is, Hey, we we're doing this cool stuff with Snoop and music. What are some of the ways that we can create some NFTs that get people excited about having them and doing that first before thinking about the consequences of changing right. all this meta within the game? And that's an mm -hmm. afterthought, which means they got to come back and clean that up. So yeah. they keep creating messes and worrying about the cleanup later, only to fix squeaky wheels when people make noise. Case in point, the the Snoop NFT for Townstar that Lycan was mentioning earlier and that they had yeah. to basically nerf the ecosystem a bit to, to adjust for after the fact. Right. Um. So right on. Again, uh, they don't. They don't ask me. Moving on. Is there a Lycan Warlord Guild? Uh, and then yes. also, you know, going into that, and then going to you know your your previous guild experiences, good and bad, and and what do you think the the future of of guilds are going to be in this new space? Well, yes. Uh, many moons ago, someone was like, "Why don't you make a guild?" And I was like, "That sounds like work." So no. <laughs> and then I had someone go, nah, fam, I got you. So 
here we are. Um, like in Warlord Gaming, it's a, it's its own server. One second, guys. I got to smoke over my son. Huh? Yeah. Hey, bud. You're famous say, now. Say hello to the people. Greetings. Hello. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm on, Future I'm on of a, gaming right a there. video right now. Can I call you back in a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, did you get your phone working? Yeah, make sure you get your children involved. No, if you're early, er, early adopter. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to call you back when I get off this call, okay? All right. All right, bye, love you. Bye, love you. All right, so that's my son. He lives in uh, Maryland. Nice. Oh, his mom. Um, so the guild, uh, it there's there's NTM, there's Jim, there's you guys. Uh, Haven. Um, I wanted my guild to reflect me as a person in the community, how I act, how I am. So it's while I'm all about competition and I'm all about, you know, us doing well, um, it's a place where you can come not be censored by Gala and you right. can come learn about the games and talk freely and uh, share with each other. You know, um, I, I do a lot of giveaways based off of the guild. Um, I, I want it to just be a place where people can come feel maybe less pressure, feel like it's a safe place from the, the storm of other places. Uh, I, all I care about is that people are helping each other. So whether that's sharing builds or renting out NFTs to each other, or I think some people are offering scholarships for, with skins and stuff like that, but it's never, it's not through me. I'm just, I'm just giving people the, the, the meeting space, right? Um, and someone was saying earlier, uh, Will Bike, actually, by the way, shout out to Will Bike. Uh, he and I go back and forth on, on the Discord, and it's because we both are sarcastic to each other, right? So it works. <laughs> and, but he, he DM me and he goes, yeah, man, you, I think you have like the most people in the uh, tournament, the most number of uh, guild uh, people participating. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, it's just the only reason I'm even I am who I am is the community. They have given me the power that I right. have. Yeah. Right. So right. if I can give back to them in any way, shape, or form, I'm going to because without them, I am nothing. Um, as far as previous guild experiences, um, I want to say I had some with maybe World of Warcraft back in the day, but it was always just kind of my friends and stuff. Um, I've had some very verbal and public discussions against certain guilds uh, in the past. BTB, uh, they, it's, listen. When money's involved, people are going to do things that I think they probably wouldn't do otherwise if there wasn't money involved. Okay. We're going to leave it at that. That said, I have nothing against them, but I calls them like a season. And there mm -hmm. are people doing things that I don't agree with and I will continue to not agree with. As far as uh, where I see things in the future, I I forgot who it was. Somebody, maybe it was, I don't, maybe it was Benefactor. It was somebody. No, no. Somebody had said they liked the idea of Guild Wars. Right. So uh, guild only servers or uh, guild competition servers or stuff like that. So uh, the future, it looks bright for the guilds. And if they had some official aspect to the game, that would be great. Um, I, e, I can monitor those in my in my guild who mm -hmm. want to cheat and I can kick them out, um, which we have somebody we're suspected of right now. Uh, we're going to keep looking at it. But um, the thing is, I can't control. Let's let's say you were a nefarious person and you wanted to hurt me in some way you could put lwg at the end of your town and then cheat and then you get mm -hmm. you know you make make me look make me look like a cheater so right. there's no way for me to control that mechanism right now so if there was a way in game that would be great but um yeah i, I just i want to be a place where people can come speak freely again you have to be polite you can't attack people right that's the basic rule i ask um follow the rules like if how to join my guild is, is a very simple process check the pins that's it it's simple, right on. You know, well, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and get you some uh, get you in our comments as well here, so people can uh, know where to find you. Uh, yep. Can you you got the, the we got the YouTube channel up here, and then uh, do you want to give your Twitter or your or your Discord let me or anything get, like let that? Let me get you guys the Discord join link real quick. Yeah, shout out to the chat. We'll be uh, discussing Star Atlas here shortly. Yeah, uh, who, who was? So I saw a couple people said uh, said hello. Um, who was it in our chat a lot of people spoke to you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well you know I, I don't uh rob mega hello rob mega how you doing yeah, you have a lot of fans with us listen hey guys if i missed you i'm sorry someone else said like him. 
uh you know listen just just I, i'm on discord it's easy to find me. i'm gonna do both things i'm gonna it's dm you right now uh that's the discord link and okay. then this and then obviously this is my actual discord discord my discord is open if you're trying to get a hold of me ping me in something like just dm me ping me doesn't matter um because there's I mean, I've got 600,000 notifications, right? Like I just, I can't get through everything, <laughs> but I do check DMs first and then I do check notifications first. So if you're in a public chat, if you're in Discord chat, Gala's Discord or my Discord, just ping me. That's how you get my attention. Um, I don't want people to think I'm ignoring them because- No, I was actually I was actually surprised that you actually responded when I hit you on Discord. Cause I know like I've had guys come into our guild uh, Discord, the Rome Discord to get in touch with me. Cause they, I didn't see the friend request cause it was buried or whatever. So. I understand what you're going through. I try to be as accessible as possible because I know what it would feel like if I was searching for information and somebody just ignored me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so last question before we before we move on to other games and stuff like that. Um, so as far as the, the future of the, the Like and Warlord YouTube channel and the, your future, your personal future in professional gaming now that we have Play to Earn as a, as a model that's – it's obviously it's in its infancy. It's not so viable yet. But going forward, what are your your hopes, expectations, aspirations on the on the future of becoming like a professional in this space, where you, this is what you do for a living? Um, as long as I'm still able to help people, whether it's Gala or Axie or Diablo three, I mean, it doesn't matter. I, my goal right now in life is to uh, help as many people as I can. Um, what I would like to see happen is once we get rental come out, get a, uh, a nice little group of people to help rent out NFTs to as many uh, low income people as we can that are playing gala that can somehow get connected to town star and play and earn and help uh, earn some, some U S dollars a day that'll help change their life. Um, I'm going to keep being me. And I mean, I just hit over 5,000 subs uh, yesterday, the day before Great I was, nice. I was at a thousand November. So it's, it's really kind of blowing me nice, away. Nice. Yeah, you're doing um, work, man. I'm going to keep being me. And I think if I can create a ecosystem around me being me and that uh, helps people, then that's, then, then that's where I'm going to take my success from. Um, I would love to be doing this all the time. I'm, I'm in school right now. Uh, once school's over and I can give all this its attention uh, that it deserves pumping out, maybe some more efficient content um, that I would love to be able to do that. But um the only reason I'm here is because of the community. So I have to give them all the crop, uh, the credit and props for that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't like me, it's okay. Cause <laughs> you're allowed to not like me. Uh, and people, people, I think people have a hard time with that, right? We're not going to be able to please everybody, but I know at the end of the day, I'm me, the guy you see right now, the guy you see on the videos, the guy in the discord, the guy on the live streams, that's me. So if uh, if that's something that you enjoy and I, or at least I'm somehow helpful to you, that's all I can ask. Well, you're amongst friends here with us, man. So all good with that. You know what I mean? I don't we, know, uh, man. Ray's been kind of giving me the we stink were... out the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we've all we've all been watching you in the space. All over. And, there, there it is. <laughs> and it's funny because uh, in the in the Rome Discord, we we talk about like you know we're obviously fledgling. Uh, uh content creators as well but we we talk about all the other content creators out there obviously all the time um and it's always interesting to see who the guys like and who the guys are kind of not interested in but you've always been a, a fan favorite um so yeah we, we we shared your your links and everything in the chat so everybody reach out to like and warlord and support his channel great content like on, subscribe on guys right now hit the like button hit the bell those notifications smash 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 smash, <laughs> smash, smash. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. yeah you never Gala, to Townstar, to Spider Tanks, and, and whatever else, right? You're whatever welcome to hang out, though. This out. isn't a dismissal, but I know you got other things going on, yeah, so no, you're welcome to stay here. That works out perfect. I'm going to go call my son, so that works out perfect. Okay, guys. cool. Uh, shout out to everybody. Thank you guys for having me on. Anytime you guys want to talk Townstar or Gala, I would love to shit on them publicly, so it's fine. Anytime. <laughs> well, any previous guests always have a, a open option to come back and see us anytime. Absolutely, so, yeah, definitely, bro. So, appreciate Great you guys. Talk. Take care. Cheers. Thank you, Later, man. Bye. Thanks so much. Right on. So, uh, luckily, we have many other games that are in this ecosystem. So, it's not like Gala Games needs to be the sole game to talk about. Um, so, um, that's always a plus. I, I would say, like, the, the game that I'm curious to see it roll out 
is going to be um, uh, the Fortified. Or oh, then they change the name of it though. Doesn't have yeah. It's it's uh, forty two now. now. Yeah. yeah. So it's gotten gotten that little bit of a makeover. But we talked about how we thought that was kind of next up on deck. They've had so they dropped some uh, sneak peeks and things like that within um, Gala Gold. However, the one marker that usually defines a launch for Gala is a whole bunch of NFTs being sold, and we don't see that yet. In fact, if you go to the store there now, all you see is the one level one arrow tower that's sold out. So. I think that as we get near to a launch, we'll probably see a bunch more sold. <laughs> and that isn't sold out right there. Gala's thing is, is that they they list a bunch and then they take them down and then they still have a bunch in their wallet, even they put though them back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, artificial scarcity, scarcity. Uh, business model is what they're doing there. It's, oh, they're going to sell out. You can't buy anymore. Oh, we reopened mm -hmm. it. Uh, I think the fuzzle... They they opened it, closed it, opened it back up the next day. I believe I'm not. No, no, don't That's quote right. me. But it was something like that where they had like two, uh, which we had like is still here. I think you probably know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's actually what he was talking about in the Discord too. Doggone it! Uh, but moving on to uh, to uh, Star Atlas, you ready, Fancy? Yeah. So uh, we did get a really cool video this week, and uh, shout out to the club for like compiling it into one thing. So uh, let's take a look. That looks Main great. Hall. Yeah, my jaw dropped. You know, it's not. Um, the craziest uh, type of video to watch compared to just what we get as far as releases for, for updates um, across the gaming space in general. But I just, it's co all coming together now, right? Like the uh, realization of what we're going to be taking part in over time. Well, one of the things that it demonstrates to me is how fast and how much of a trajectory their development is on. Like if you look at uh, the stuff that's been released over time, especially going back to, I mean, what, a major event that I think of is when they launched Score. Um, the things that have been released since then for us visually are are, are pretty amazing. And I've seen yep. uh, uh, other channels that aren't necessarily within the Star Atlas community use uh, clips that they've shared, like the one of the, um, of the uh, O-Pod uh, coming into the hangar. Yeah um yeah so it's it's they've come a long way for sure and as i mentioned to you guys kind of before the show it's like i bet there's a lot of people in the star citizen community saying man what the heck we you know how long we had to wait before we saw stuff like this <laughs> yeah yeah and with real engine 5 is this is going to be that game changer of uh as, as far as development speed uh, aside from the economy which is a whole other beast um it's just nothing compares to it especially real engine 4 um so we're definitely going to see a, a speed and as far as what we're going to be um, able to do sooner than later yeah. and the other thing that's cool about unreal engine 5 is like it's not when you see stuff like this you're thinking like man what kind of graphics card and, and you know gaming rig build am i going to have to have well, you know, it's uh, the, as you as Unreal Engine, you know, continues to develop and get better. It's also utilizing less resources, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to see all the height differentials. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be one of those little guys. Hopefully uh, it'll help me in PvP. We'll see. You don't want to be too little. You just go around staring at asses all day. <laughs> <laughs> Smelling everyone's junk. Shooting <laughs> shooting from behind them. Uh, Doesn't the med tech look great? Yeah. Looks uh, origami to me, but it does look nice. <laughs> yeah, the colors make a big difference, so they do. I'm saying that just based off of uh, it being just all white. Yeah, it was really nice in the first part of the video, being able to yeah. see like a third person perspective on a like fully fleshed out model. Mm -hmm. We do talk a lot about like first person perspective could be a problem, in Miranda's. Right. So it's nice to not have to think about it here. And that that right there on the floor is where a human body would be, because <laughs> uh, this is like one of those um, 
I think this was the ship that we were speculating oh, on, like on, a the tail, thing? Yeah. on the yeah. tail. Yeah. It's the evac. Right, the evac. So basically, when I see this, like right there, that box that's on the floor, that would be like a, 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 a one of the, the evacs, but on the back of the tail, it looks like they could hold about four of those. Yeah. Or something something yep. like that. So Click you could have on. one in, one inside if you're trying to, uh, you know, do some resuscitation or whatever if they really need it and the other ones are the outsider just for transport yeah right and uh, i posed it here in the middle of the px6 and you can see all like, the little annotations of what everything is that's the kitchen that's display screens the table yeah it's really cool to see mm -hmm. This seemed rather small compared to uh, like what I imagined uh, small would be. But, uh, yeah, I guess they're all like crammed in there together, so it works. Yeah. What do you guys think will be like? You know, when they if you have limitations for how many people, let's say, <laughs> what if you tried to stuff like 150 people in here? Would it get off the ground? Would it cause issues with flight? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, it it has to be that if it's going to be somewhat of a simulation of real life. Right. So, it might just be much slower and spend more gas, uh, use more gas while you're going. Or well, you can't guy, even take off unless you're in a seated position, maybe. Right. Hey, that guy we saw in that room over there, what, is he in the shitter or is he like, is he a prisoner? What, he's what, a prisoner. Um, I think it's, this is the PX6, so it has like a brick. That must be it. Oh, it's the brig. Okay. Yeah, and it's bigger than so. I imagined. Like it's all just like yeah. tucked away around the corner. That's funny. <clears throat> yeah, it's really awesome to see things like this from the team, especially uh, the thrippid. That's really yeah. Cool there's one part yeah on the ground. That clears up a lot of questions that I had. Oh, um, front loads. Yeah, how do you even land that? <laughs> Based off right. of all the photos we've seen in the past of it flying. Okay, I'm curious to see what this looks like on the inside. Did they go in this one? Yeah. Uh, they go in the one behind it. They like fly up into the cockpit. Ah, okay, okay. It was always an odd looking ship to me. It's yeah. interesting to see it sitting on the ground like that. That's even weirder. Well, it makes you a thousand six hundred and twenty something dollars a year at the Whoa. current Atlas prices. <laughs> right. So, uh, if that means anything, then Big maybe things, you want to pick one up. <laughs> Big things. What? What's that? That's kind of weird. Huh? Oh, there we go. Right. It's got some style to it on the inside. Yeah. Is that thing like a you know an atlas of you know for navigation? That'd be pretty cool. Most likely. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be interesting if it actually works like that, where you could actually go and interact with the map and stuff. But it's kinda it's kinda wild. Yeah. Those windows like inside look like something in a church. <laughs> yeah. Mosaic. Yeah, it's very awesome. Yeah, this thing's legendary too. So, yeah. Yeah, like it's a uh, like competitor, I guess, is the Opal Bitboat in the same kind of like class. Like this is a fighter, and that's a uh, transport. I believe. It'd be interesting to see what it's like inside this thing during combat. And because it's supposed to be such a fighter, and they've got when you see the images of it in combat, you can see these huge. Um, I don't know if they look like laser turrets, like four of them. So that does that mean there's four stations where, you know, hopefully you have a skilled right. gunner? Is it going to, is it? And each one? To do? Yeah. Yeah. Hydroponics? Is that what that said over there? Yeah. Yeah. You sleep in the middle. Got to have, uh, got to, got to grow your food on the way, but. Right, right. That was the last thing I would think. Uh, a thorpid would have some type of hydroponics mm -hmm. from its shape. Yeah, it, it lacks storage, I believe, just because of its shape. But 
that's pretty much it. It's got loads of guns. And so, you know, that's, that brings up an interesting point. So hydroponics is not something that's stock in that ship. Uh, so that just ends up... Be, so how would you a module like that be interchangeable? Six escape pods, sir. I would think you would... If, if you're going to have hydroponics as a part of the, the game lore canon, then I, I feel like you got to have that on all the ships then, right? Like, what do you... What are they doing? Or the smaller ships have to stay closer to like a bigger ship with it, right? Which is kind exactly of cool. like yeah. you're gonna have to have some kind of something if you're not if you're not uh, doing a Star Trek style and uh, just generating food on the spot, then you're gonna have to do something. Well, and the reason that I was saying it was interesting to see it in here is that the one ship that I'm aware of that actually has it listed as a uh, as a module is the is the Guardian. Mm -hmm. So if you list it, does that mean that means every one of those come with it? Or as in this case, it's just where they happen to place a module, but you could always pull that out, sell it, place something yeah. in it, put something in its place. I was always taking those as kind of like suggestions. So like they, they come with these modules, but you can swap them out for other modules if you if you wanted to. Or certain modules you could swap out. Like I, I was kind of thinking that like uh, like the Rainbow Ohm, for instance. It has that art gallery. I was thinking automatically switch that out, you know, but I don't know if that's possible or not for sure. Yeah, there, there goes those turrets you mentioned, Just Yeah, yeah, the four guns. We didn't see inside a manning station, or did we? No, yeah. we didn't. No, it, it was, was quite it was, cool. It like it was just kind of wide open in there. So maybe it's just a thing where if you're, you know, in one of the uh, pilot seats, you can use targeting and then yeah. it just automatically targets them. But yeah, much. and we'll uh, re replay this first bit of the video because it's really cool. Yeah, and, and this gets me going with, um, I guess, as individual first-person like shooter type of gameplay. You know, we, we were, a lot of talk in the early days was just about the ships and space battling. and But then I, I remember asking questions to um, about landing on planets and getting out of your ship, having your, your weapon class right on you know slinged over your back. And then what does that look like, right? Do we go into caves? Are we killing monsters on planets, like to clear out some space for a claim, right? right. For like that, that's all uh, things that I'm excited to do as well. I'm gonna bring up this this question from the chat, uh, Christian Johansson. One thing I don't like is that SA team said the Christmas video was real gameplay with someone landing the Opod in the hangar. It wasn't true. If you look at the releases they have had since, annoys me. I could have swore we had a. Uh, Chipto, or yeah. didn't we have Chipto on here? He, he confirmed yep. he that, that was real gameplay. Was someone actually piloting it? Right. Yeah. So I'm not sure and, where you're, you're coming from, Chris. But yeah, and, ahead, and based based off of what we've seen that they've released recently, doesn't necessarily dictate or mean, I, mean that that video wasn't real. Because so of, here's here's what I yeah. think the disconnect is. I think that in that particular instance, they probably have different aspects of the teams working on different things and so yeah. you do have those that are building out the ships you which means you also have to be have someone that's focused on well how does the ship fly how do the mechanics work and of course they had an aspect of a hangar to fly into here what we're seeing is we're seeing them gear up to make the showroom um, this big huge display and so you're not seeing a lot of stuff moving the same way so i think that both are uh I think that it is likely and possible that someone did actually pilot that ship and we're just seeing a much larger build out here for what is going to be the showroom. So, yeah, I, I expect I uh, the I flying experience to be something like that's going to happen maybe in a month or so when it's all refined and like the HUD is everything working because it's uh, not going to be as hard as uh, like some of the flight simulators that quite like a joystick but who knows until we can play it right all right let's stop this video so uh another thing that's happening this week is um a community made game called uh two for attack uh basically it's a game that's kind of endorsed by a tournament with like nfts from star atlas empowered by star atlas so they have all these cool rewards and uh yeah there's like a knockout period uh on the 14th where they're gonna give out the uh, prizes afterwards so that's gonna be cool nice 
Yeah, uh, I can actually like play a bit, and we can like talk over it. Yeah. Let's do it. So, what kind of prizes are we talking about from this? Uh, let me try and find out quickly. This was put out by a- who was it? AEP. Uh, Sprite von Pixel and Rat of Doom. Yeah. Okay. It's cool. Uh, where's the post about it? Yeah, uh, Christian Johansson. Yeah, man, check with uh, check in the Starless Discord uh, and talk to some of the mods and stuff like that. I'm sure you can get a uh, official answer to your question because I'm pretty sure um, there's been several official responses to that topic. I, I can't find it. I'm just going to go ahead with this. That's all good. Yeah. So at the moment, it's 20,000 is the high score. Oh, I, I, if you're, I know what you're looking for. Um, first through 10, it goes um, a Greg, a Mick. Plus uh, uh, Tufa Feist, two of them, and then it goes a Grekamek, a couple of Opal Jets, Pierce X fives, all the way through ten, and then a bunch of Timbalobies are some of the prizes. Okay, so what was that highest prize prize again for the number one? Here, I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna drop this image in here. Okay. Is it a Greka? See, so, yeah, yeah. While you're doing that, this is uh, just another. Th- um, game that's playable, right? Not the actual Star Atlas game, but something that a community is able to, to do and enjoy while we're waiting. So, you know, DeFi Kingdoms just recently came out with a third party grant um, um, system that they're going to have to have uh, members build the games for the actual NFTs themselves. So, this is not that you're playing with your NFTs here, but it's game related to the the ecosystem that we're all a part of, which is Star Atlas. So it's good to see these things happening. Okay. So the the, the ship you win is the uh, the Agrika Mick, which is what uh, Fancy's flying here. Yeah, video. it's like the main character. And okay. uh, two for feasts are attacking. You can get health that drop. You can upgrade your weapon. And there's bosses every now and then. You can see like the health in the top left, the uh, score top middle. And there's the like the mega shot. It's <laughs> quite cool. So uh, I've only got 200 points so far, and the top person is 20,000. So I imagine they were playing for quite a bit of time. So these like are at this stage still. So the these are actually com- competitive ships, right? The Ogreka Mick and the uh, Two for Fights are like the same size. They're both fighters, right? Uh, yeah, I believe small fighters. soundtrack yeah. is really cool too yeah the music is great these games are somewhat addicting <laughs> i'd say in my opinion yeah i spent uh many hours in arcade playing games like this yeah. mm-hmm. many quarters as well those poor quarters that are lost now so these little red coin things they are health so if you don't get them when you're full health, you can like save them for when you're fighting a boss later, which may be useful. And that sparkly effect there, that's uh, like an invulnerability shield. The bullets is like an upgrade to your weapon. It just gets crazier the longer you last in it. One cool aspect of this is you can go ahead and just play this for free, right? And mess around and win. Uh, some NFTs that actually earn you some Atlas token. Right? Yeah, this could be the way you get into Star Atlas. You get into Star Atlas through this, yeah. And in future, you could even have like a little arcade where this is like a little mini game you can play while you're waiting for like a shit battle to start. That'd be awesome. I was about to say, it would be kind of cool if Star Atlas would just add this on in and you could play this in the, in the space stations or something. <laughs> So I won't go too far with this. I think like the boss is at two thousand, the first one at least. I've only got yeah. two thousand. You what's you what's your high score on here? Three thousand. Nice. 
and twenty thousand is what's on the leaderboard, or that's how you win. Yeah, twenty thousand is the the top as far as the leader. The top prize. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool the community gets this. This is what it's all about. I mean, during these, you know, the bear market times, I mean, these are the, the communities that are going to last are the ones that are um, still building, you know, and still supporting during the during the downturn. That was a success that Axie had. Yeah, till this day, even though the market's down and some projects have gone through some exploits or hacks, um, you can pick one almost at this point, and they all had something going on that the community is still around and supportive depending on again what the developers do and what the team shares after the fact uh, so a lot of these projects that i've been in personally have turned the ship around um and uh, i'm talking more so with uh DeFi kingdoms at this point because of their recent um exploit with the jewel token um so yeah they all had a well we can continue talking about star atlas but i just i just like I'll touch on it later. I just like how these projects and the developers, they're here for the long haul. They have the money to do so, and they're transparent um, enough with the community where you have community members doing things like this, you know, building out games and, uh, you know, the support is real. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's quite fun. I'm definitely going to try and win a prize because, uh, yeah, why not? We need more yeah. ships in our fleets. <laughs> <laughs> Go well. So yeah, that was a uh, two for attack. Right on. So I think that's it for uh, Star Atlas, Ray. If you wanted to move into to Axie and such. Oh uh, yeah, this is a couple of points. Nothing crazy. Uh, let's share a screen here. Beep, beep. And yeah, so there's been some uh, some happenings around Axie Infinity. And there was a land staking substack article that came out. So land staking is a thing. After much time and effort uh, of holding land, you'll now be able to stake your land and earn AXS and rewards, which is always uh, nice to see that projects are coming around. Although it was like pulling teeth with some projects and Axie Infinity to just, I guess, have it sooner than later. But we heard some rhetoric from the team themselves about how, um, just similar to what Gala did uh, or, or expresses with holding just holding NFTs, it shouldn't be something you just earn from, uh, but you need to do something to earn uh, a reward instead of holding. So I agree that the space need does need to turn into a skill-based action to earn type of, um, you know, like actual play instead of just holding something. But again, there needs to be a balance uh, with the early supporters and all of what was promised or talked about for so long on a roadmap um, up until now, where, yes, we all, we all understand the transition needs to take place, but maybe not so soon, uh, you know, or not as hard as it, as it is happening. I don't so know. So staking is live right now, or it's about to be live here soon? Not now. It's going to be soon. No f exact dates, but... Are you going to earn based... AXS or S SLP or what are you thinking? AXS staking rewards will be given okay. to people who own land based off of the plot and its rarity off of the initial. Um, so these are the amounts that you'd get. It's fixed in, in, in AXS. And this is based off of what the chest prices were on the initial sale of land uh, back in 2018. Um so we have this nice image here that they dropped with all or most of the land items. So the quality is on point. A lot of people were excited about this. I am. Um, and yeah, it's just about time that projects, the ones who have been around and are the biggest, you know, Axie Infinity just hit and broke $4 billion worth of NFT trade sales. So, um, or yeah, so the, the revenue is there. The economy is live. The daily active users are there. And, um, that's something that a lot of projects are going to struggle with is just having that large player base uh, so that they don't have to take resources and time and energy to build a community as well as the actual game. So if they have anything going for them, it's that community that's undying, <laughs> even though you have some outliers and, you know, OGs that might be very vocal 
um, with a lot of what isn't happening or what should be happening. It's not something that should should be looked at, in my opinion, as uh, a negative for much longer, because nothing other than just the macro and then also the the bridge hack is um, necessarily looking negative as far as this project being a success and staying around for the long haul. Um, you can't really say that uh, about other projects who are doing the same like breed rental model. You know, like I don't want to, I don't want to name too many names, but there, every project is that is on a different level of uh, funding and daily active users, and um, yeah. So this is the this is what it potentially is going to look like on the UI, the front end, hmm. and uh, yeah, and you can check this article out. It's a short one, but moving forward, I think it was here that I read. Uh, yeah, as it specifically relates to land, once any type of gameplay for land is released that can support token rewards, these land staking rewards will transition to be to be rewarded through active gameplay. So like I was saying, it's not something you just hold and now earn forever on, which is something I personally like to see, uh, because this is just to, I guess, a tilt, you know, a tip of the hat to all the investors and people who have been holding land for so long. Uh, yeah, it looks like a one to two year return on it. Uh, not, yeah, it isn't that bad for the land, but they had to make it, uh, lucrative in that way because of, for how long land has been talked about and how long people have been holding land in that first quadrant of four. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 it if anything, this is, it, it could be higher for these, uh, compared to the chess prices, but this is right in the middle. Uh, which is satisfactory. And um, so, yeah, one to two years is not bad at all if you're getting into land. The only issue here is that there's going to be more AXS that's going to be released and then potential downward pressure. But if the token is hopefully finding a floor <laughs> anytime soon, then I guess we'll be moving up from there. But you never really know. And I'm not an economist so or a TA. I tend to feel like floors are... Uh... A ways away at this point. Yeah, I think we got 2023 will be a floor somewhere, maybe. Yeah, not financial advice, and I don't know anything. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, but definitely gives me confidence that Owl of Moistness, who is a uh, a prominent, renowned developer and contract smart smart contract writer, uh, is the one working with the team to build out this um, this land staking um, contract, which is, from what I'm learning, a pretty simple thing to do. You know, you hear all these developers talking about how to create these soft staking contracts and they're they're not as complicated as everyone might think they are or as a project might explain or try to explain that they are uh, because they're just probably not wanting to have people earn more of a token that they're not necessarily playing uh, the game for. So, you know, you take it with a grain of salt, but it's positive, in my opinion, for uh, Axie Infinity landholders. You know, I have to I have to kind of give like all these devs in the space a little bit of credit because I think just things are so new that a lot of the devs might not necessarily be aware of all the innovation that's happened in the past year. You know, like I look at like what LEO Trades is doing with the imposters thing and how smooth everything works over there. And then you look at, you know, even Board Ape having issues, you know, with doing stuff still. So right. I, I, I tend to give everybody a little bit of credit. You know, I mean, things are so early. Yeah. And and that's the thing you, you you branch out and you learn so much in other places that you're not getting from the, the initial project you're in maybe or have the biggest bags in and then you start to question which is normal like why aren't they doing that let me ask and then if and then if you get treated in a way that is not community oriented <laughs> then you might uh, take a different route as far as your investments but as far as the game and it being playable I'm grateful that there's something to play right in this space and I don't have to resort to playing traditional games and then wishing on a star that somebody makes a game that's playable you know some people have different um you know genres of game that they rather play than others so i respect that but um but yeah talking about genres of games you know we had gary uh, uh and uh i'm sorry we had grant who is the executive director of Undead shout Blocks. Out to grant. yeah shout out to grant and he was uh on streaming live just yesterday he does it every thursday and we have here just the, the beta coming out on the 26th. So it's a, if I put the volume up here, maybe you guys can hear it. 
And so what we're seeing is, you know, about five or six weapons a day and getting staked, just getting more token continuous being staked every day. And I think that's a positive sign. Yeah, so what's happening here is that he's Wait, just showing off the game. I have it on 1.25. Like just put it normal speed. 1,500 undead tokens, so it's and 90 cents. He so talks about the economy. He's answering uh, questions, but this is just to show off some of the gameplay that he was playing. And, um, yeah, the economy seems to be uh, well thought out. I, mean, I know the token came out just on May 4th, and you were able to stake those tokens to then earn a weapons pack that had various weapons, depending on how many tokens you purchased and staked for different lengths of time. And talking about games that are playable, this one is going to be right up my alley as far as what I'll play. Uh, I say play it in two weeks. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be bugs. There'll be some nerfs and buffs to certain things, but it's all it's all well and good, and you'd want to release something um, to, to test, right, and to have the majority of people play. But there's been a lot of testing that's been going on behind the scenes, and I'm just excited to be playing a first-person shooter that is, um, you know, that's something of this quality in the space so mm -hmm. far. So, yeah. First of its kind, right? I mean, I think uh, Superior is going to be a competitor here at some point, but it's not it's not here yet. These guys are going to be first movers, it looks like. Right. And this is just for the tokens uh, where you get your APYs, AP and then as soon as you have the tokens purchased and staked, you, uh, you get automatically the weapons pack in your wallet, which could be sold on OpenSea. So depending on what the prices are for the token, which I can't tell you right now, I don't have it pulled up, or what the... The, the floor prices on OpenSea, you know, you will be able to rent those weapons. So that's pretty cool um, to other people. So depending on what you want to do, if just play as yourself or become a, a renter of sorts, you can go ahead and do that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, moving on from Undead Blocks. I actually cap. blew up uh, the craft. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, you know, again, a trending type of situation. I haven't since the fourth, uh, looked deep into. Oh, uh, sorry. I haven't looked into the economy uh, for why this took place, but uh, just the sentiment, um, the sentiment in the Discord is pretty still bullish um, from the conversations I was reading. Um, but yeah, I'd have to look into that. <clears throat> but overall, in the long term, as the game gets gets traction and there's more reasons to to um, acquire the token or play the game to earn the token. I guess we'll see how it goes. But they're launching soon. And then, uh, yeah, I just want to hop over to DeFi Kingdoms. Shout out to Sandwich Punch and for the Inner Grove podcast. They cover everything DeFi Kingdoms. Um, so there was a grant proposal um, type of program that was launched by the team of DeFi Kingdoms. And they had a huge doxing party of the whole team. Uh, just the other day, live, after their exploit took place. There was a lot of mistrust happening and conspiracies or speculation taking place that had not only the token price go down and people sell off their assets um, because there was too many questions that weren't being answered. And then, sure enough, they were answered. The, the whole situation was kind of um, taken I guess uh, it was exaggerated, I think, for the for the most part by the community, although a lot of people were affected by what happened. Um, and not as their money was stolen, but just there was more jewel being sold by a nefarious actor than others knew that they could do the same thing. So everyone was able to do this, but there was only a small subset. This article, I mean, this, this YouTube channel uh, and this um, specific YouTube video is one of, uh, with Richard, who made this third-party game that utilizes the actual NFTs of your heroes in DeFi Kingdoms. So you can go ahead and place a bet. I mean, you could place a bet on, based off your stats, whoever has the highest stat, you'll be attacking with that number. So, uh, yeah, if you could, if you join up and you try to get in, you can do a bet uh, of, I think it was $10, $100, and $1,000 of the in-game token, which is the gold. Not the actual jewel token, from what I'm, from what I learned just the other day when I watched it, and uh, this is just another example of programs that are being supported by the team um, for community members to build, and uh, this is going to be iterated on, and but the team is com creating their own PvP and PVE for the NFTs themselves. So this is just like a sample third-party game that was created, um, and it's pretty cool. 
so I haven't played it yet. Been busy, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. And um, yeah, I had that speed 2x, I think. But yeah, and then I just you know keep up with the news like we all do in the space. But you know, Nifty Islands is another game. Uh, scarce the scarce land model type of metaverse uh, genre narrative is is being talked about more and more after Yuga Labs had their land sale with the Codas, and yeah, they're just continuing to partner in different NFT projects or with different NFT projects so that their avatars could be 3D modeled to play with in the world of the metaverse of Nifty Island. You know, we have World Wide Web who's coming out with a game. They're also another type of interoperable NFT game. And then also Webiverse. That's another one that's that's out there. And it's all, there's just, there's a subsection of what we know as, as the land sale NFT projects that are that are happening, that's coming out now. And it's where you don't pay for land, right? There's an open world and there's infinite land, but there's a different way of how you're going to be able to earn money. And that's going to be through your activity and how much activity you could potentially bring to your land that you didn't have to pay for. Um, so, yeah, user-based um, generated content is a thing of the future. And it doesn't necessarily need to be through selling of land NFTs. But we'll see how it all goes, because this is something that needs to be explored in the space, in my opinion. Because uh, all we know is make lot plan, make plots of land and sell them, and then build around that a game. Um, so, yeah, it's still still pretty early, but these are the trailblazers of this this um, this section or this this category, the scarce land model. And uh, I think that's it for me. Yep, that was it. Pretty short. Nothing crazy this week from me. Yeah, cool. I've got some alluvium uh, there. Yeah. And like talk of the land sale, the date and time has been announced. Yeah. So June 2nd, 9, 9 a.m. UTC. And that's really interesting less than a month away now let's see what the market will be like when that arrives yeah that is going to be interesting especially the way that they're going to be doing the uh, uh, the release it's going to be over three days uh, yep. there's going to be 278 yep. plots per hour yeah <laughs> That's um, crazy. yeah and they're doing it and yeah the batches so it's gonna be interesting and then they're also so and I, I I saw it listed here somewhere. Do you recall fancy how much it drops each hour in price? Um, it'll be in here somewhere. Uh, two and a half two and a half percent per minute for two hours. Mm. That's interesting, huh? And yeah, the five tiers. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be trying to get that as cheap as possible. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch, especially if it. Like tells you how many there is ready left. Yeah, I'm kind of aiming for a, a tier two on this one. Yeah, I think that's kind of a sweet spot for uh, for kind of value on this one. Hmm. Yeah, it's more expensive than uh, originally I thought it would be. What currency are we using to buy? As it turns out, what's my reason to buy is because no. What, is, what, what currency? What currency are we using? Oh, so, yeah, ETH, uh, ETH or are we doing an ILV or what? Okay, ETH starting price and, ETH? Yeah. and SILV. Yep. Okay. And so that's why I'm, I'm like right around, I, I should have enough SILV from staking right around the time it uh, comes out, depending on, of course, what the market does to be able to uh, be in that second tier range. And if you, uh, I don't know, when you get back to the other screen, there's a section when you where it shows you what uh, what you get with the tiers. And it just kind of looks like the sweet spot there for for value. Um, hmm. Okay, it's a little bit down from that, I think. Keep going, keep going, keep it's going. Low oh, it's <laughs> up from it then. Yeah, it's a little higher. It's where they talk about the the different elements on the site. Uh, that is. Says... You don't have that one. That's what we got. Yeah. Talks no, there's an. I, I'm because I'm looking at it on my screen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that one right there. So. Um, 
So yeah, basically with uh, the tier one, you get three different element sites, and you, you know the elements and stuff are essentially uh, fuel and things that kind of are are necessary within the game. So you have element sites and fuel sites. Uh, there's no landmarks until you get all the way to tier three, but you also get a production boost of thirty three percent on that second tier, and uh, yeah, it ends up being twice as much of the element sites and three times as many as the uh, is the fuel sites but yeah we'll see how we'll see how many people are going to jump jump in and and uh go after it man they, they scale up and price something fierce yeah they do and then of course the last the, the fifth tier is going to be a uh, talking about uh, auction yeah six digits on that right? say four over 100 grand. yep <laughs> yeah I, I restaked my rewards so it's not on the table for me hmm. yeah it seems like uh land pricing has just based off of yuga uh, uh, like yuga labs i know it i think mm -hmm. they did this before i guess ape um or yuga labs said they were going to release some land sales but that the change um is pretty steep as far as like the price but i did want to share this morning that karen uh today confirmed that we will be able to lend out our land and split mm -hmm. the profits with a third party so big news for the big gills out in the space and then also good news for whales looking for a passive income. I certainly don't have time to manage it. So literally re calling out any whales that are interested and uh, maybe wanting to get whales interested because of the potential profit that could be made on both ends as Illuvium and the, these whales who, who are going to be getting in if yeah. they do. So, yeah. Interesting. So you, can, you can now you're going to rent your land out. So yeah, that's it for Halluvium and ends our show. Right on, right on. Well, it was uh it was great uh talking at you guys again this week. It was great uh having Lycan Warlord on, new friend of the channel, uh outstanding. Uh any last words there, uh Jesse? No, no. I it's uh, you know, it's always interesting keeping it together during the, the, the shifts in the market and to see what the developers are gonna do. And we've seen progress on a few fronts and yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, and it was great to uh, in, enjoyed having our guest on for sure. So that was that was good as well. Right on. And uh, what about you, Ray? Uh, yeah, stay strong out there. You know, it, it goes a long way. Liking, subscribing, just keeping keeping in touch. Shout out to everyone who's a regular watching on the stream live, and giving you feedback, asking questions, uh, and sharing where you can with who you can. So we definitely appreciate you all. Join Rome. Continue these types of conversations. You know, uh, yeah, we're a, we're a guild of gamers. You know, this isn't a scholarship type of guild model, but we are gamers that are ready to go. Um, so we have our structures. And, yeah, more info to come on that uh, soon enough. So appreciate you guys. Right on, Ray. And uh, what do you got for last words there, Fancy? Uh, yeah, thanks for anyone who's still here with us. Cheers. Right we'll on. We'll be here next week. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm that, that contrary person to where um, bear markets actually make me more excited than uh, the bull runs do. You know, for me, it's it's all opportunity. You know, it's, everything calms down. Everything slows down. You can see better. There's not as much distractions. And, you know, the people who made money in this past cycle in 2020 and 2021 were all people who were in in 2017, 2018. You know what I mean? And it's going to be the same in 2024. So... I'm looking forward to the future. It looks bright. Um, shout out to the community out there. Um, have fun. And uh, we'll see you guys all next Sunday. Uh, same time, same channel. Bye-bye. Atlas Miner, you were born To push the block in search of ore and Now it's time that you were gone so farewell, Atlas Miner. And farewell, Mud and Pony, too. Who's the sector? Same to you. The pirate bastards ran him through. So farewell, Atlas Miner. They promised you a diamond mine. I'll be damned, it's hard to find I 
hope there's justice for their crimes. Farewell, Atlas Miner. Farewell, friend. Don't take it hard. Getting killed ain't all that bad. Treat you well in the repair yard. So farewell, Atlas Miner.